Good afternoon, you savages. It's Friday. Some of you working for the weekend. I had, for the very first time in a long time, I had a couple old fashions at lunch today. Forget about it. They were so good. Went to the Henry for lunch. I took a couple of folks from this factory to lunch. It was fantastic. Went to the Henry. Asked for an old fashioned with four roses and uh, a little splash of Grand Marnier in the top. Best way to have whiskey during the day. It was fantastic. I have a couple of topics today I'm going to cover. First is our ultimate fan experience. For those of you who don't know, we're having a competition right now. People are submitting pictures. They're submitting uh, really good pictures, actually. The quality has really, really gone up substantially since we first started. For It's the ultimate fan experience. So uh, you are allowed to put up no more than one a day of a meme photo or video item that shows your Medford knife either statically or in action or how, however you like. And uh, then we're going to pick a winner from that bunch and we're going to fly you in from wherever you are around the world. I don't care if it's international or here in the States. We're going to fly you in and for five days you're going to come work in the shop in all departments and you learn how we make knives here. Is the ultimate fan experience. You're either going to hate my guts or love me at the end of five days. Um, so that's that. And I'm going to flip the camera in a minute. I'm going to show you a bunch of the entries and point out interesting stuff and talk about a few things. Next, next thing I want to talk about are words in the Urban Dictionary. Now, you know we had our Nishimoto experience which is actually turning into a real thing. The Nishimoto is turning into a thing. And when I, see, when I say it's a thing, I mean people are actually using it as a verb. And they're referring to it in their phone calls and emails with us. And it's funny. So for those of you who don't know, oh, let me, I'll tell you what, let me do the, uh, let me go to the tools. Give me a second, sports fans. Don't lose patience and bail. All right. I got this cup. That's the Nishimoto. There's the definition on the back. Definition's got a type of winning, so don't get worked up. When a person claims someone else is racist and never disguise the fact they're a cunt. Now, that's going on. What's interesting is that's going on nationwide. The whole Black Lives Matter thing and all of this brouhaha going on everywhere. The, the truth is, the justice system works. People don't like it. The numbers, the economics, it bears out. There's a great deal of accountability. And the only thing that the Black Lives Matter movement is doing, it's not creating justice. It's making otherwise open-minded, neutral people start to judge people of color and uh, that's bad i don't know if you guys notice this as well but an emboldened victim class of america doesn't rise that class all it does is alienates them from the great american success story that is the rest of us Okay, so the new word is called a biscotti. Now, it's not a biscotti, not to be mistaken with a biscotti, which is yum. It's a mascotti. Now, I don't know how you guys are, but like Jeff and I go to lunch every day and we talk a lot of shop while we're at lunch and we've gotten to know each other really well over the last few years. And we have groups of people in our, in our lunch circle. And the last year, you know, the serving staff turns over a lot just because of the nature of the restaurant business. 
And what we've noticed is there, are, we've had a roster like. Typically, we're like, hey, let's go to this place on Tuesday, and this is at the great bartender. We go there on Wednesday. Thursday, we got the one with the two cute waitresses who always like to take care of us. Friday, we got this. Monday, we got that. We kind of crack up about it. You know, it's not our number one driving thing, but it's a little ongoing joke. Hey, Tim. And as the masks start to come off, there are people we have only seen with their masks on, and we have noticed this phenomenon. There are people that we straight up thought were complete hotties. Like, oh, you know, like, you know, guy talk. We're like, oh, my God. And as the masks come off, it's like, um, you ever see a gal in a parking lot, maybe drive by, you're like, oh, my God, look, she's gorgeous. God, there's so many hot chicks here. Then you see them get out, and the door opens to the car, and they step out, and you're like, oh, no, 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 they weren't hot. They're just, like, really cute from one little angle. There is a whole group of people who are not attractive when they take their mask off. There's something going on right here where they're like, they're really, maybe they're sexy and they got musky eyes or something. And then they take their mask off and you're like, uh, and I had this conversation. I was like, hey, Jeff, is it just me or is she way better looking with the mask on? You know, great body, beautiful hair, awesome eyes, take the mask off. We're like. Mascotti, M-A-S-K-O-T-T-I-E. I think it should be in the Urban Dictionary. Just a thought, a suggestion, things, as Arsenio Hall said, that make you say, hmm, I don't know. Anybody else experience this besides me? Or is it just me? It's just me. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Guys, only if their wives are watching. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about. All right, in a, we're going to. I'm going to show you some pictures, and we're going to talk over the submissions for the Ultimate McFan Experience. The next thing we're going to talk about after that, just as a parenthetical to my day, are Beta Mobiles. A Beta Mobile is a vehicle that when you see it driving down the road, if it is not a woman driving the vehicle and it's a dude. You think with yourself, you think to yourself, oh, that guy's clearly a beta. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the voting to you guys. And I don't want you to start voting yet. Don't vote yet. We're not at that section of the program. Hold on while I take a drink from one of our scheduled sponsors. Okay. So uh, when we get back after we take this Ultimate Fan Experience break, I want you guys to think about what make a vehicle is the ultimate beta vehicle. And then what actual uh, vehicle itself is the, uh, you know, uh, not, not uh, brand, but specific model is the most within that. We're going to have a little back and forth on this. I've had this discussion with a few other people, and it's fucking, we, I think it's, it's just me. I'm twisted. I think it's funnier than shit. So here we go. I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to point out some stuff. I have the Ultimate Fan Experience page pulled up on our website. Guys, let's check it out. Let me see if it'll allow me to flip it now. Yeah, here we go. All right. Oh, now, now that it's forward, let me go to, let me just switch us back. Okay. All right. So I want to talk about a couple of these. I'm going to tilt the camera a little bit so you get, get, guys get a nice view. Um, some of these are just wonderful. This, this one here with this Praetorian called Americano is lovely. Got great depth of field. It's just got good composition. Beautiful setup, she said. Very cool. Got his beads in the foreground, knife in the background, nice use of depth of field. No flipper Friday. That's kind of cheeky. A lot going on here, and it's, it's a little one-dimensional, but it's a lot going on. Very cool. Daily carry, kind of cool. I love the bottle cap opener with the little knuck bottle opener. This is really, this fat daddy river 
is you know we it, it, we call it the river because it's got this kind of weaving uh, we, you know because we call that lazy river. This is a great picture right here. Good depth of field perspective. It's got some like kind of foreshortened properties to it. Same with this one with the rounds and the laughing sky. I, I, I love this. As we move down, you'll see this is one of my favorites here. See, maybe if I called him a racist and threatened to burn down his factory and challenge him to a duel, he'll polish my knife for me. Hmm. This one here is so funny. Whoever did this, really fucking good sense of humor. I like it. Now, this is my style. A little, it's blunt. See, I love this one. Very cheeky. I like this one also. Very, very fun. Let's move down a little bit into the general field, into the stuff. That's the stuff from just today. Um, I just see one really fun picture after the other where guys have got their personal stuff in or how they carry. Um, I love this one with the tomahawk steaks right here. Let's jump down a little bit, see what else we see. Oh, I love this one with the bottle of whiskey right here, Medford and Chill. And I love that guys are naming them. You know, Medford on the rocks. Pumpkin splitter over here. Let me move it a little bit to the left. I love this one, tie Fire. Just a bunch of really creative... Oh, and I love this. I love the guys who've done these memes. Let me see if I can zoom in on this one. Uh, let's see right here. This one's really funny. Let's see if I can pull that one up. I think I can just pull that up. Yeah, this is a great one here. When you're, when you're carrying your Medford and you see someone else carrying your Medford. <laughs> I love that. So anyways... Very fun stuff, you guys, and I appreciate all of the effort and creativity that's going into those. Um, so much fun seeing guys take their knives and do stuff with them as they're carrying them around. They're out with their friends, or they're having a whiskey on the back patio, hanging out with their wife, they get a cool picture. A lot of guys are taking great pictures with their phone. So super fun, love that, keep up the great work. Remember, it's uh, at medfordknife.youknowwhat, and, and then little forward slash and UFE. We don't want to actually say a site or I think the bots de derate our video. Let's talk about the last thing today. And this is a little bit of what we would call, the, this is the viewer interaction section of today's video. Just a moment. So this is about, let me flip there. This is about uh, beta vehicles. So first, I was hoping you guys could vote on what brand of vehicle um, do you think is the most beta? If a dude's driving that, he must be a beta. This is like Jeff Foxworthy's, you, must be a, you might be a redneck. You might be a beta if. So what's the brand? Now, um, I'm going to run through some brands with you, okay? I, I don't see a lot of uh, betas in, let's say, the Porsche world. It's not a beta crowd. It might not be alpha, but it's not beta. Um, now, there's going to be exceptions to these, okay? Let's say you're 26 and your parents gave you a vehicle. If someone gave you a vehicle, then you drive whatever they've given you for free. Yeah, or let's say you're 20 and they give you a vehicle. No problem. You're driving it all. If you're driving a Honda, look, it's really, really, um, it's a sensible vehicle. I get it. So I'll tell you, I picked the Honda Ridgeline. If you're driving a Honda Ridgeline, you're definitely a beta, a lesbian, or you're a gay. Those are the only three possibilities. It's the worst looking truck ever. It's sensible and awful. Okay, now, Prius, Gil, great. Derek Clark, Tesla, you know, I... I wouldn't, I would going to disagree a little on a Tesla. I've been in a Tesla on ludicrous mode and gone almost as fast as a twin turbo Porsche. It got my attention, costs a lot of money. 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure Tesla fits that. Uh, it can, but I don't know if it does. Honda rim liquor. That's uh, that's that's awesome. Um, okay. Any votes on the Fiat 500? Any of the Fiat products? If you're a dude and you drive a Fiat, you're a fucking beta. Guaranteed. I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm going to piss off somebody with a beta. Smart car means you're stupid. Smart car too. Just awful beta, awful beta mobile. What's the most beta brand? Is it Fiat? Is it... Is it Fiat or is it Honda or is it Subaru? I know some guys like those Subaru uh, VRXs or ZRXs or whatever they are. Uh, but I just think uh, a lot of, I see a lot of people out romping around in those. I wouldn't be my number, Cliff Murphy in Alaska, to Subaru. All right, you guys think about it. Jason, we're having a discussion about the brand vehicle, the manufacturer vehicle that is the most certain to have a beta at the wheel. If it's not a woman, it will be a beta. Kia Soul. Kia Soul. Hands down, 100% Kia Soul. Kia Soul. And were you watching the video in there? No. Did you know I was coming with this? What do you got? <laughs> now, notice how many... Remember that game you played when you were a kid, Punch Bug, when you punched, you know, when you saw the Volkswagen the yeah. Beetle? Yeah. We used to play that as a kid. Well, there's, there, there's none around anymore, right? So, myself and the kids, we play Kia Soul. Right. Because there's so many. Um, Kia Soul. That's such a. <laughs> I just. It's, How about I'm, a Prius? I'm not electric. Yeah, of course, that's a gimme. I'm not electric, but at least I get like 87 miles to the gallon. Yeah, there's something about. There's certain vehicles that set it off for me. I'll tell you what it is for me. The Honda Ridge Runner. Oh, yeah. The Honda Ridge Line. Oh, the, yeah. the pickup truck that Honda makes. Uh -huh. Like, if you're that, you are a 56-year-old, 200-pound lady with gray hair that you can't tell is a man or a woman from afar. <laughs> or Bernie Sanders' uh, nephew. Or Bernie Sanders' nephew. I mean, right. it is the beta mobile <laughs> of all effing time. Yeah. Um, can you think of any others? Well, you, you, the Prius is obvious. And then, uh, uh, it's funny. People say Subaru, and I wasn't thinking Subaru at all. I mean, it's a lesbian mobile for sure. Right. It depends but, on what you go into when you talk about Subaru. If you're talking about the, uh, was it the Samurai? <laughs> that's Suzuki. Oh, that's Suzuki, though. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Make a Jeep. yeah. What about um, uh, what about the uh, Forester? If you're a dude driving a Forester. Yeah, that's pretty weak. If you're a 32-year-old guy driving a, uh, a Subaru Forester... Cyan XB, Honda Cube. Honda Cube, Cyan XB. Beta. <laughs> just a beta. Because if you were, a, if you were, let's say you just, uh, I'm not even going to say an alpha. Let's just say you aspire to be an alpha, as most men do and almost no one is. What would the vehicle be if you're, instead of getting a Subaru Forester, what might else you get? Ford Explorer? Or is that a beta mobile too? But see, like the exception to the rule would be like a uh, Ford Ranger. Geo Tracker. I'm getting some really Kia Cerato. <laughs> <laughs> Geo Tracker. That's that's pretty. That's pretty. We good. should find out what Nishimoto drives. Oh. Uh, you know, this funny. These guys talk about Nishimoto every we'll video leave, he we'll gets brought up. Out. He's part of the vernacular now. There's only 150 of us who know the inside joke, but. Right. Poor guy. That's like things we end up fixing it. Around. What are you handing this to me for? Just to take a look. Sexy? Okay. Tools. Anything else I need to know? Well, just the titanium. What do you want to do? Same. Well, Except we have to... It's silver. Yeah, so... You, want... you, have, you have to hold off on the titanium ones. Okay. Don't mark I got plenty of other ones to do. Um, and when you said Ridgeline, it made me remember the engineer that was bragging about his super nice truck, and then I saw it. And it was a ridge line, and I had to laugh. To Toyota Yaris. <laughs> oh my god! Look, it, I mean, if you go into Yugos, if anybody remembers those. Oh my god! If you listen, if you're a dude who aspires to anything, you get an F one fifty. I don't know what an F one fifty costs. That's a that's a truck. Okay, how, okay, the perfect beta mobile, but in disguise. 
I think. Tesla? Somebody brought up Tesla. That's, it's for a well-heeled beta. Okay, that's, uh, I mean, because they look cool-ish. They look bland as hell. Okay, maybe so. I saw one yesterday in the parking lot where you goose that one place. Uh-huh. Flat black all the way around. Yeah, I've seen the wrap like that. that. About the manliest one I've ever seen. Chevy Chevette. <laughs> so, uh, okay. what funny story about a Chevy Chevette? I actually, I actually learned to shoot out the window of a moving vehicle at uh, uh, speed control signs, speed limit signs, out of a Chevy Chevette. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, it was back in the, I guess it was back in the mid '80s. Uh, it was the first time I drove a car and shot out the window, and it was the first time I drove the car and shot out the passenger window. Didn't know later it would turn out to be a useful skill that I worked on. Volkswagen Rabbit back in the day. Volkswagen Rabbit. No, Rabbit was not a beta car. That was a fun little zoomy car. All right, well, yeah, okay, maybe so, but still. We did have a Suzuki Sidekick. All right, thanks, you guys. Listen, as you watch the video before you head out to your weekend, make your comment on the ultimate, ultimate beta vehicle. Um, I don't know. I just think it's so funny because, uh, you know, Americans are so – our vehicles reflect our personality so much. I love driving up to vehicles and I'm like, oh, God, and then seeing the person in the vehicle like, oh, that makes sense. You know, like people's pets look like their uh, owners sometimes. There's something about seeing the, their vehicles and seeing what they, seeing what they drive. Anyways, uh, hey, guys, we're going to do a live video with Amy. Let's ambush her. Amy, come on in. What's going on? I'm out. You out of here? There's time. The end of the day? Yep. Going to pick up Jack? Yep. Do you and want to come around and say hi to everybody? You have to be there to get the kids by 4 30. 4 45. Say hi to everybody. Nishimoto! Hey! Oh my god, I can't believe you went right into the end, dropped an end bomb. Uh, yeah, that's the N word. We were just talking about beta vehicles. Like, if you drive this vehicle, you're clearly a beta. Do you have any votes for what that vehicle would be? Mine was a Honda Ridgeline, you know, that pickup truck that Honda makes, well, or, or a Fiat 500. Either one of those two, if you're fucking driving one of those and you're a dude, your balls are in your wife's purse. Prius? Say, say, Prius? Sorry. It's good for the environment, though. I mean, why would you say that? It's good for the environment. I'm like, I just drive it because it's good for the environment. You call it a, a badge wagon. Oh, <laughs> that was her, not me. <clears throat> Joe Erler says, hi, Amy. Hi, hey, Joe. Amy. Hi, Gil. Um, I have an idea for the name of my, um, since I do most of the knife videos. What? Knives on the Table with Amy Medford. Because I always started off, I'm like, Knives on the, today, Knives on the Table for? Knives? Mm -hmm. uh, knives on the Table. K-O-T-T, -T, cot. No, I like Knives on the Table. Cont. Knives on the, the table. Oh, ask Jeff. Jeff's, Jeff will come up with a good... Knives on the Table. You mean that's what you're going to call the show? That's what I want to call it. Knives on the Table. We could uh, uh, cut out one. Do a little cat, graphic? A little, yeah, a little sign hanging in the background. Don really liked it. Knives on the Table. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. She's out. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Uh, throw in your, uh, your votes for the most beta vehicle you can think of out there. Remember, if anybody's telling you about wearing masks or being safe, that the universe, the world that we know it, falls, everyone falls into one of two categories. The first category is the one of personal responsibility. People who believe they're responsible for their own actions. And the second are the group of people who think that everything else happens to them. The people that believe everything else happens to them are the people who process the world through safety. I want you to change your behavior to make life better for me. And the group that I belong in, the personal, account personal accountability group, we process the world through freedom. See, I will take care of myself. I will find my own happiness. I will work within the rules and I will play the game and I will better myself and my family. And I am the master of my destiny. And I will raise my station or lower my station based on my efforts. 
Remember that as people tell you to wear the mask and the mask mandate comes down. Remember that when you talk to people who say, why wouldn't you do something that's a little bit safer? I don't want to do anything a little bit safer. Nothing. I want everything to be a little more risky. Not rash, not unreasonable, not unknown, but calculated, measured, and accepted. I'm okay with it. I want us to be free. Because I think free is more important than safe. Everybody lives. Everybody dies. But how do you choose to live? Does that last eight years per capita matter that much? Nobody in their 80s is out there coming up with the new thing, the next great thing. Nobody in their 90s. Watched a great show about these people who live to be 100. And many of them were 105, 108, 110, 112, 104. And they said, how great is it living this old? It's amazing. They said, all of them agreed going at around 90, 92 would have been the best. There's a message there for all of us, for those who have gotten that extra interest on the dollar that ultimately existing is not the most important thing, but thriving during our time here. So enjoy your weekend, challenge everybody, challenge everyone you talk to, be in everyone's nose with a smile on your face and facts in your head, rubbing up against them about the fact that liberty and freedom are the cornerstone of this country. All those folks are crying that we're this racist, big, awful, institutional, racist, bunch of racist people. They're lying to you. It's not true. Ask Barack Obama. Ask Condoleezza Rice. Ask Colin Powell. And if you could get an honest answer, ask any of the multi, 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 multi millionaire per year athletes who live in the cream of this country, how racist and awful it is. It's an awesome place we live in. We have to protect it. And we have to require people to be personally responsible. And when we don't want them to be personally responsible, the other side of it is communism. It's people who believe their safety is your responsibility. It's a litmus test when you're talking to people. You can find out what kind of people they are. I can ask two questions and I can really quickly find out pretty much how someone's going to think about everything. What it does for me is it gives me an advantage. It gives me an advantage when I'm talking with them, when I'm debating with them, if I'm arguing with them, which I don't do very much. I can tell in their language in one or two questions if they're a safety or a freedom person. And if they're a safety person, I can destroy every argument they have. The question is, how nice do I want to be doing it so that when they leave, they don't just hate me, but they walk away going, hmm, that guy said something that got my attention. Because what I want to do more than be right is I want to convert people who are wrong. You know, Ronald Reagan said it best. He said, you know, it's not that our liberal friends are stupid. It's just that so much of what they know is wrong. Have a great weekend, you guys. Greg Meffer, Meffer Knife, MKT, USA, USA.